wow, that's actually pretty good. Welcome back, everyone, to our feature interview for this episode. I promise I won't lean that way, Nick, because my production assistant's yelling at me for leaning. Um, our interview tonight is uh, two fine ladies from the Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu. Uh, we have with us Lisa Foreman Jiggets and Marcel Lee. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having us. Yes, thank you for uh, coming on Security Weekly. Um, uh, I'll start with, uh, with Lisa. Um, by just describing how you get your start in information security, and then if Marcel, you could also answer that question as well. Okay. Um, it was really, it started in the military back when DISCAP was around, uh, which is doing CNA certification accreditation. Uh, and then from there, uh, I got into pen testing, but this is years later, you know. Um, and that's the area that I really enjoy doing when I do get to do it, uh, because my my nine to five is not doing that, and I'm working on changing that. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent, Marcel. So I I came from kind of a, a standard corporate type career, but then I got interested in cybersecurity. I thought at first that I wanted to do like cybersecurity policy. I'm not sure why I thought that. <laughs> And then I started doing some competitions and got kind of excited about uh, more of the offense defense side of cyber arena. Excellent. Um, so uh, now both of you work for the Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu. Could you tell us uh, what that is and what the, the, the mission statement of that organization is? Sure. So um, I'm going to just say WSC for short. Okay, good. Is, uh, we're a community-based nonprofit, pending 501c3. And when I say community, uh, that means uh, we engage our members in the programs that we're creating. So everything is intertwined with the members. We're giving, um, we're offering services, pretty much anything and everything we can to help women uh, enter and advance in the field. So we're doing you know, workshops, um, mentoring, mentoring uh, socials, networking, uh, we go to conferences together. You know, anything you can think of, I think we're doing. If not, we're going to be doing. Yeah, outreach to a lot of different groups for women and girls, a lot of partnerships yeah. uh, for like uh, Girls Academy and Girls Camps. Um, um, yeah, and we just try to get out there and speak whenever we can about uh, getting women involved in technology. Cool. Now, I was reading uh, an article, and uh, I think it was linked from your website, and it said women hold 56% of all professional jobs in the U.S. workforce, but only 25% of jobs in IT. Why is that? Oh, just to add to that, too, it's 11% in cyber. <laughs> okay. So it's even less in, in Oh, wow. Wow. Um, why is that? So we think that there's possibly a lot of reasons and I'm going to say also that there's a lot of people who are trying to answer this question right mm -hmm. now. It's a pretty hot topic. Um, it's a broad range of things. I think sometimes uh, women are brought up from an early age to not be geared towards doing science and math and that sort of thing. So um, that's where you need to catch them at the K-12 level. Mm -hmm. There's also a little bit of, um, I think... Uh, I don't know, would you call it like the boys' club atmosphere? So I categorize all these in the barriers to entry and advancement. So yeah. The good old boy club, the, um, the academia would be the faculty being mostly male, the, the, the lack of um, aggressiveness that the woman would have to request the faculty to be a mentor, for example. Um, recruiters is in that bucket now. Yeah, views, work-life balance, <laughs> and it's also it's it's kind of hard to be the trailblazer sometimes. Like, I I don't have a whole lot of friends who are like into you know deep pack analysis, <laughs> or nor do they have any idea what it is. So you know, I I know that I'm going to go to different activities and things where I'm not going to know anybody. So there's that piece of it. On mm, top that's of a good point. Being probably the only female, but I think a lot of it stems from. You know, historically, like Marcel was saying, girls were ushered into, you know, veterinarian and social 
social work jobs versus science STEM based um, areas and you know via television and movies the perception of someone that's in IT or security is this geek in the basement in the corner with the pocket protector yada yada right or the other side of that is you're in this big old data center with a million monitors and it's cool you know, <laughs> give us a real life deal and it's, cool. um, it's, it's very skewed on what the, the outside world thinks this, this field is about yeah, and there was actually an interesting study, I think this is the one the Girl Scouts maybe did, um, where they surveyed students and said, if you uh, if you described like the smartest girl in your class, would she be popular or whatever? And, and that did not ever equate. Like the popular girls were not like the smart, sciencey, yeah. nerdy girls. And yeah. I mean, I think I didn't know that anecdotally. <laughs> I yeah, think that it, ahead, in, the, in the K-12 education, there's not just the direction they're steered, but the direction they're steered away from. Uh, personally, gr now granted it has been quite a few years, but uh, the first time my daughter was told uh, that it was okay, she didn't get math, that was hard, was in kindergarten, and it was a female teacher. Mm. Um, wow. We just about, uh, my wife, um, I was unhappy about that. My wife was slightly more than unhappy about that. But, you know, I mean, if in kindergarten you tell any student, male or female, uh, but it seemed to be certainly that, uh, that, you know, this was a teacher that had undoubtedly grown up being told math was hard for, uh, for girls and uh, ended up as a kindergarten teacher. And, you know, it's a second, third, whatever generation. Mm -hmm. And so we have to um, challenge the entrenched, um, the entrenched problem to a certain extent before we can move it forward. Because, yeah. I mean, look, I'm an old white dude. I'm supposed to be the problem, not frustrated continuously because people aren't treated right. Um, but, yeah. Now, Paul, you just came from... Oh. You just came from open house with your your kids. I did, and we had ours last white week for our daughter, and they drew pictures of themselves and put things about themselves on the board. And we were supposed to find your kid. They didn't put their names on them. We found uh, my daughter's, and uh, it was uh, you know I have brown hair and I have hazel eyes, which has gray eyes, but in any case, and uh, and I really like, and what was her answer? Hacking computers. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> She's <awesome>. six. <laughs> She's six. <laughs> so. Well, you know, I, well, I think some of the stigma is, you know, I know a lot of my friends and family, um, the women want to be teachers or they think they want to be teachers, right? And I think that, like you said, uh, Lisa and Marcel, they're kind of somewhat society grooms them to want to be teachers because that's just what women do. And they're like, well, you do computer security. That must be so cool. I'm like, you can do it too. I'm like, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. And some of them aren't happy being teachers. And I'm like, make a switch. There was no question there. Um, but <laughs> I, I, do, I do. I mean, if you've got the perseverance to deal with what you have to deal with to be a teacher, yeah, you may well have the perseverance. You may have to learn some stuff. But uh, right. yeah, uh, <laughs> if you can deal with that, uh, you can probably – if you can deal with being a teacher, especially in a public school – um, you're used to environments which are not as supportive as they ought to be, to put it so mildly. So, Lisa, I think it was you that said uh, mentioned the stereotype of the computer security being the boys' club, and I, I really I despise this stereotype. Mm -hmm. What can we do to break down this stereotype? Well, I was going to mention earlier, um, this is a societal issue, which just like you know, slavery and race, gays. It's big, it's gonna take time. Mm. Everyone needs to do the little part. So we're doing our little part here with, with the group. Um, K through 12, you know, academia needs to do their part. You're in academia, Marcel. Um, it's gonna take time, but I think, especially now, which is really great, there are like all these STEM groups popping up. So everyone's starting to see that this is an issue. You know, the White House has a, um, Michelle's promoting or promoted a, um, STEM for girls yeah. thing. And mm -hmm. So the awareness is getting there, which is great. Uh, but I think it's just going to take, take time, just like anything else. Yeah, and I think part of it, too, is is there's sort of a lack of uh, role models right now. So, you know, who, who do you look to as a young woman to say, I want to be that computer science lady or cybersecurity lady or whatever? They're just, they're not really out there or that prevalent. Um, 
and I just read something, it was kind of cool, it was talking about how um, women have uh, gotten into forensics a lot more, and they tie that to like shows like NCIS, where you have a cool like, forensic check. <laughs> so yeah, like, no, that's yeah. a good point. <laughs> so, but that actually had an effect on mm. uh, women getting into that field. Hmm. So you need like, the cool cyber chick now, like Garcia, criminal minds. Yeah, <laughs> more of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we uh, we actually had a guest. Uh, was it Sarah that was on the show yep. a couple of weeks ago, and she's one of the leads for the uh, OSN forensics at SAN. So, um, you know that that's an interesting comment actually, because um, you know I've, if you look at Hollywood, uh, they always reinforce the typical geek male stereotype when they're doing hacking things. But the fact that the NCIS, uh, you know, the forensics angle is is, is emphasized, you know, cool cool chicks. Uh, has had an impact is is a bit of a lesson for for the media outlets. I mean, they could they could make a difference here by emphasizing the same in the uh, security community. No, absolutely. I mean, we all know the media is like extremely powerful. It does, yeah. you know, it can change how people think mm-hmm. and perceive things. We should make a movie. Yep. Well, we are. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and if you yeah. think about it, who had the most accurate hacking scene out of any sort of computer IT hackerish type movie? Trinity, Trinity, Trinity yeah. in the Matrix. Yeah. And what so, non-U.S. film yeah. featured a female hacker? The girl, the girl, the girl. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yes. Big fan of that movie. Yep. Um, you should, re- you should yeah. read the books. The books are better. <laughs> so do you think that, um, uh, Lisa Marcel, are there uh, preconceived notions that uh, women may think like there's stuff in IT that really doesn't appeal to me, so that's why I didn't go into it? Is there like a preconceived notion? Are there actual things where they're like, that's just not for me? Or do we need to you know, break down some of those preconceived notions? some preconceived notions because I know we have a lot of um, high school students come through where I work at college and uh, and we talk to them about cybersecurity and information security and whatnot and one of the things that I hear a lot is like oh I, I don't really want to do like hard math and hard science coding. coding but you know there's so many different roles in the field you don't have to be like you know a calculus whiz right. to be able to you know Half a box or whatever. Um, so I think just understanding that there's so many different roles and it's not just like these preconceived ideas of what a job would be in the field. Yeah, no, that's so, interesting. I, I think that uh, people in general. Uh, have that kind of uh, notion that well, you have to be really good at math to do computers. I'm, <laughs> I'm a shining example. Of that. <laughs> no, I'm even more shining. I can't <laughs> add three, five, and seven. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> 12, right? Yeah. Well, I've got a math degree, so I just will shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Hey, I got some math problems I need done, Joff. So, Lisa, I believe it was you that was quoted as saying um, that women tend to problem solve differently than men. What, what are the differences, in uh, your opinion, between the problem solving skills uh, across genders? I don't know where that comes from as far as the way, it's just the way women think yeah. differently. Is it because, you know, I don't want to say the caveman days, is it in us, you know, dealing with families and kids, and multitasking and having to deal with multiple issues that we bring it to the work area? Yeah, it's sort of like maybe a holistic approach as opposed to a linear it's approach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, that's not across the board, of course, but that's kind of what I see. Mm. It, no, it, it, yeah, there, there is some definite truth that men are from Mars and women are from Venus, and in the way that <laughs> that, that I've observed, just in my my own personal life, and in how you know, both men and women approach a problem significantly differently, um, and both with very varying and excellent results, uh, and it, it's quite amazing sort of thing to see sociologically that that that, that, that yeah, that's not to say women are better or men are better. It's just different. It's yeah. Just fine. yeah. But yep. how do you deal with? You have to know how to deal with that. Right, you know? and and I and I think from a security perspective and the whole hacker culture, I think thinking of different about a problem is sort of the core sort of things that we're we're after. Is how do you take a security problem or security issue and think about it differently to either make it better or worse, as the case may be. Yeah, you just nailed it, Larry. That that's exactly the reason, in my opinion, um, our community community could really really need a big influx of women. Would do us a lot of good because. The creativity and the ability to to think in that more parallel, multitasking way um, is a really good fit for penetration testing. I mean, it really 
would do us a, a big service in the community, I think. So uh, shame on us. I mean, or whatever it is. We need to do something about this. Um, at the risk of making my own stereotype kind of along those lines, Joff, um, you know, I've interviewed dozens of penetration testers. Yeah. Without question, they're all in agreement that women are statistically more successful at social engineering. Is this something? <laughs> is this something you cover in your courses that you're telling the younger generation? Uh, that is, of course, in fact, you believe it's true. I believe it's true. <laughs> we have things we can use. I mean, it's true, right? Yeah. yeah. We have some days. We have some inherent um, <laughs> advantages, I think, that we can utilize. <laughs> I mean, when I teach security to my students, I always tell them when we talk about like tailgating or whatever, I'm like, so if I came up behind you with an armful of books or whatever and said, hold the door, like, would you tell me no? Right? And they're like, well, no, probably not. <laughs> so it's, I think it's a little easier for us to infiltrate sure. on all different levels. Yeah, I think it's that ability to break down that layer of trust. Like I, I would totally hold the door open, right? Because I, I, I feel it's my duty to do that, right? And that's just kind of the, the social aspect of it all. But yeah, I, I think women can more easily break down that layer of trust uh, and be a lot more successful in, in social engineering. We've interviewed uh, female social engineers in the field, wildly successful, wildly successful with that. I, I have to ask a question, though, when, when you bring up that topic, Paul, and that mm. is um, uh, – is, I wonder if anybody has actually studied this enough to understand. I mean, you, you're saying sort of in a passing informal survey that, yeah. that others in our field believe that women are wildly successful at social engineering. But is that women wildly successful at social engineering against male targets? Mm -hmm. Or is it women just in general wildly successful against social engineering? Because I think there's an implicit gender bias, and, and I think you just mentioned it, you know, you're a man, a woman comes to you and, you know, wants to get into a building, you're likely to hold the door open and, and so forth. So I'm wondering um, if there's a bias on that at all or if or if it's just a, a true thing that, that in general uh, women just are more successful in social engineering. That's a good point. Although, you know, I would say that I could pretty much walk up to any woman and ask her about her shoes and she would ask her about her shoes and where she got them from. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, and you got a whole like relationship started right there. Yeah, and yeah. I was gonna say, I, I and you know, regardless of whether it's not about shoes, but I think if you played that same sort of action, you know, armful of books, can you open the door for me with either a man or a woman that that either the man or the woman would open the door. Um, but I think it's more apt to happen that someone would open a door for a woman than a man. Sure. Yeah, and when I walk up to you and ask you about your shoes, you're like, I don't know. <laughs> Like the, it was the first ones I grabbed in the closet. Yeah, actually, it's usually <laughs> I take them off. Here's have a sniff. Or something. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> um, so you mentioned that you're offering uh, workshops. What uh, sorts of things are being offered in the workshops? So our workshops are. Um, let me talk about what we just did. Yeah, I want to make the point that we are our workshops are. What, 95%, 90% hands on, you know, specifically to get ladies hands on the keyboards, you know, to fill that gap of what they're learning in school. Not that schools are not teaching it ourselves, but um, there's a big gap between what they're teaching in schools, you know, theory and book stuff versus what am I really doing on the job. Mm. Um, so like last weekend, I think, yeah. Yeah, we had a workshop, um, Marcel actually taught it, Intro to Wireshark. And nice. she brought us some PCAPs, did some deep dives into the packets, and uh, it was yeah. a lot of fun. And we have all different levels. So, like, for that one, for example, we started out kind of basic with just, like, the OSI model, TCIP model, and uh, <laughs> I can't say it. I know what it is. <laughs> and then, you know, by the end of our five-hour session, they were carving uh, files out of the oh, capture. So, beautiful. Nice. So, the point of our workshops, though, are to provide exposure to the different areas that they may not even know about. So we're, we're doing a broad range of topics, you know, malware analysis to bringing apart the computer. We had that um, to build your home, home lab, lab, labs, networking, like your virtual machines, and just setting it up to do like little red team, blue team exercises, Linux, um, yeah, you know, anything that's cool. cool. Yeah, you know, <laughs> pretty much everything that um, you, would, you would want to know in the field. 
Now, in, yeah. in those are those workshops um, primarily held in the the DC metro area? That's where your your base, correct? Yeah. So on site they are right now. Um, of course, we offer all the workshops virtually. So we have folks attending from all over um, virtually, and uh, as well as men, we have some men have membership, and they they attend remotely as well. Very cool. Uh, you also have a, a mentorship program. Can you tell us about that? So this is a big part, I think, of what the industry needs um, for uh, you to be successful. You know, I myself was lucky to have a mentor, although he wasn't security. You know, I think I would have been in a whole different area right now. Like that, you know, tell me, he's like, you need to get your certs. I was in the military then. Get your starts, get this, that, and you know, won't be called to do the most paying job, but <laughs> that was the government. But um, we, our mentorship program is, is matching up a uh, a woman who applies to someone that sees into the field, and they provide guidance, direction, pretty much anything that they need. Um, you know, granted within the the mentor's availability, but I think it's a big offering that we we offer. Yeah, and something that I've been really just kind of fleshing out is um, I wanted to do like a, a more formal mentorship thing with tying up a competition practice, but where women would just come basically hang out for three hours on a Saturday morning, mess around with their, whatever tools they wanted to play with and try, and, uh, and just talk to some women who are in the field already. So it would be sort of a combo of students and people in the field. And, Great networking, yeah, yeah, but just more casual as opposed to you know the paired up for the fun one. Very cool. Uh, did anyone else have questions? Um, how does one get involved in the mentorship program? So you have to be a paid member to apply, and that's all done via the website. Just apply, and we will match you up. We're actually getting ready to change that format up though, because um, unfortunately. There are not enough mentors to go around. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do like a cohort group thing. We'll match up maybe five women to a mentor and we'll meet up that way. And actually, I think it's good because the other ladies can take advantage of their questions and they yeah. may be in a similar situation like most women are in our group. You know? Yeah, people tend to have the same kind of questions and concerns. Excellent. <clears throat> now, you guys have definitely talked about, um, you know, we talked about the kids a little bit, and you know, we have obviously talked about some uh, some women in workforce. Are you doing any sort of work towards the um, the educational development in schools? And I, I heard Girl Scouts mentioned, I think, at one point. Um, have have your programs evolved to go sort of down towards some of the earlier ages, or is it is it mostly uh, to some of the the older folks? So that's in the future, because um, that's a whole nother... Sure. Thing. No, I mean, younger than... Or, oh, I thought you meant um, younger than our girls. Yeah. So we do have the girls program, which is targeted towards middle school girls. Okay. Although high school girls come to that as well. But um, I thought we were, you know, we're talking about going even younger, which is like a whole other <laughs> curriculum development um, issue. And uh, we also are trying to get to the schools to do after school, you know, programs. But there's a lot of red tape there. <laughs> yeah, I, so there's a lot of work. There's a lot of work involved. Yeah. Very Excellent. cool. Uh, is there um, <clears throat> any other programs or uh, general advice you want to give to our listeners um, uh, about the uh, S Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu? Well, not necessarily to that, but I would like to to address the issue of um, the pipeline, you know, diversity uh, in the pipeline. We mostly, this is probably towards corporate folks. Um, we know there's an issue with the lack of qualified professionals, right? There's this big demand, oh, we need all these cyber folks. It seems that hiring is based on, you know, number of experience, you know, check boxes and Keywords. I don't think there's a, a enough of a people factor in hiring. Um, just people in general, not necessarily women only. 
can you take a chance on someone that has shown that they're passionate and driven to want to be in this field, although they may not have six plus years? You know what I mean? I think if, if corporate would take a chance, you know, and hire someone that has shown that, I think our workforce will be yeah. filled a little more and faster. Well, there's a lot to be said for being passionate about mm -hmm. the field, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and you got to start somewhere. But yeah, I mean, so we would love to talk to companies anytime about how we can help them with that process. And remote internships. Yep. You know, that's a big thing we're working on, trying to partner with companies to provide the internships for these women. Because again, there's that catch-22. I can't get a job because I don't have experience, but I can't get experience. Because, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Let's take a chance here. Come on. You know, Lisa, I, I, I couldn't agree more. In fact, um, I've recently worked with, with placing people, um, and I, I help people out from, from time to time on that. And I've run in that situation where it's like, well, they've got the right degree, but they don't have experience. And how do they get a job if they don't have experience? And I'm like, look, I'm like, take a chance on this person. I'm like, I, I had to like basically go in and, and, and vouch for people um, who I know in the community and you know corporations aren't willing to like take that chance unless you really push for it and yeah. you know i think that's unfortunate that they're they're just looking at well you know degree experience certifications and i'm like sometimes you got to throw that out the window and just and take a chance on someone and you'd be pleasantly surprised, I think, a good number of times. Yeah, and I've been I've been in the same boat. I've been I've been a hiring manager, mm -hmm. and I have hired folks, not based on the fact that they have a certification, but the fact that they can show that they have an aptitude, and they have a hunger to learn. Yeah, and the ability to sort of self drive. Um, I I have hired folks that had no. No, little to no security background, mm -hmm. um, but some of their hobbies were very similar, and they can apply those same concepts to the security field. And in many cases, I've been pleasantly surprised. And also, uh, you know, some cases, Ashley, I have, I, in some good, cases, yeah. I have also been horribly disappointed. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ashley's <laughs> but I a case a of, of pleasantly surprised, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Were you saying something? No, I was saying that's why it's a chance. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, actually, it's funny because it was exactly what you said, Larry. It was this person has uh, an interest to learn. I can tell mm -hmm. that they want to learn. And now, you know, Ashley's co authoring a SANS class with me. Yeah. So, you know, it, when it works out, it's awesome. Yep. So. And when it doesn't work out, it, well, you but, know, but that's it. you don't it's, know unless you a try. Chance. It's yeah. a chance. Exactly. Yeah. But meanwhile, we have people that are not hiring people that don't meet whatever high expectations and leaving the jobs unfilled because none of us in this business have everybody we need on the teams that we have. Yeah. <clears throat> and yep. that, that, I mean, I get it in past lives when I had employees, you know, you, if it takes too much training, you can't do your job anymore because you spend all your time training somebody. But if it's uh, yep, you take a gamble, do some investment and, uh, and move forward. And I mean, it, it's depressing that in this industry that we considering that all of the old farts and a lot of younger people, uh, came into information security from something else, yeah. right? Yep. Um, yeah, so it, we all stu right, we all stumbled into it, or a lot of us stumbled into it. So the fact that it works—I mean, it's broken, but it works—should uh, make us more welcoming yep. of people that are underrepresented, whatever group that is. And you know, one of the most grossly underrepresented groups mm -hmm. in our industry is women. So, Lisa uh, and Marcel, do you work uh, in help with placement, or do you like you have recommendations for people to of uh, places to go to help get placed in a job once they've acquired some skills? So we're we're getting ready to roll out a job board so mm -hmm. employers can post jobs. Um, we're still finessing that, um, and we're compiling a, a list of internships, which um, you know they've been pretty successful with some of the women getting jobs, yeah. getting hired for those internships. And we're trying to really play off of, you know, the personal contacts that all the board members have, you know, to to make use of that to place. Because we are essentially vouching. I vouch for a lot of women. Right. You know, because they're in the group and I see what they're doing. Yeah. So um, our contacts are definitely playing uh, a key factor in you know, against those relationships. So Paul, everything you plays. Paul, do you need more interns? I do. I actually, there's an opening for uh, an executive producer uh, here on the show, so we'll we'll talk after. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Very cool. Well, Lisa and Marcel, thank you so much uh, for appearing on Security Weekly. Um, I, I do have five questions for you both, if you wouldn't mind playing along. Sure. Uh, do we, are we going to team up on them? Um, yeah, well, yeah, I'll, I'll ask them, and then you can like take turns answering. How's that? Okay. <laughs> uh, three words to describe yourself. Uh, mine would be real, passionate, and down to earth. I, I think I would say passionate, dedicated, and straightforward. That's the same thing I said pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Great minds think alike. That's right. Same sign, same sign, same Myers Briggs. <laughs> if if you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? Poison pills. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. If you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? We have a good one. Okay, so mine is it's actually based on a true story, and it's called The Cat Peed in My Zen Garden. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, that is... Wow. I would that totally buy that book. Oh, man. Just, yeah. <laughs> and, and, is that and, on Amazon now? <laughs> and, 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 you know, I have a very similar story. The cat didn't pee on my Zen garden. It actually peed on my UPS. There you go. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Lisa, unfortunately, you have to follow that up. So, let's see if you can... I know. I know. <clears throat> I say, just do it. You know? Just do it. If uh, yeah. if uh, if you had superpowers, what would they be? Oh, mine would be teleportation. <laughs> nice, oh, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Never having to get on an airplane again would be awesome. Yeah, I think I would have, I don't know if this is a power, but to be able to replicate myself so I could be in multiple places at the same time. That's a good one, too. But I have I a second one. I want to be invisible, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be invisible all, teleportation all, all, woman. All I can say is about the replication. I like pizza. <laughs> yes. I like pizza. <clears throat> Pit, now, this is the this is a tough one. This is really tough. <clears throat> Pick two celebrities to be your parents. Oh. I like Oprah for my mom. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Oprah. Oprah. Okay. Wayne Dyer for my dad. <laughs> really? I'm going to go with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. For your oh, parents, yeah. Wow, Brange <laughs> Brangelina. 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 Nice. Wow. Well, Lisa and Marcel, thank you for appearing on Security Weekly. <laughs> thank you for having thank us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Fun. Take care. Have a nice night. And with that, we'll take a, <coughs> excuse me, take a short break, come back, and wrap up the show. So don't go anywhere. You know, I think I finally picked my two celebrities. <laughs> well, we want to hear them. Actually, I just came up with a pair, too. For the pair. Well, I got a pair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Larry says he's picked his celebrity parents. Yes. Carrie Byron and Einstein. Jack. George Carlin and Mark Twain. Oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> 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 wow, I'm still sticking with Robert Downey Jr. and Betty White. That, that's an oh, awesome. Wow. You know, I'm Couple sticking with that. I'm, I'm sticking to my guns. Oh, sticking to my guns. <laughs> just, Jeez. What's wrong with having two dads? You know, I mean, <laughs> especially <laughs> those two. George hey, Carlin make sure Mark. make sure you sign up for <laughs> my Sans class. Securityweekly.com forward slash iot. Ten percent discount code sec week fourteen. Go ahead and sign up for that class. It's going to be epic working on the slides now. It's so awesome. I'm so excited. Uh, Ask you some of the first round of labs. It's just they awesome. kick ass. Awesome. You will have fun in that class. I guarantee awesome. it. If not, I will get up and dance on the table. I, um, you should do it anyways. I should yeah. do it anyways. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And Looking forward to seeing everybody wait, at Derby. Wait, 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 I don't get to pick celebrity parents? Well, hold oh, on a minute. Joff. Celebrity parents. Okay. I'm going with uh, Julia Roberts and... Oh, Angelina Jolie. <laughs> that's that's a good one. No, he, yeah, he's he's being crafty. Uh, Larry, well, if we could uh, cue the music, some I kind think of they music. They just did music. Yeah, but we're still talking, so now we need more music to take us out. Uh, yeah, that works. That works. Larry, 
Please, yeah. my friend. Yeah, you know what? I'll actually be here next week, too. I got a week off without travel. Sweet. For once. And then the week of travel of travel hell begins before DerbyCon. So. Take us out. All right. Take us out. Yes. See you at DerbyCon. Over. And. Out. <laughs>